uh, my classmates, um, I got to be in school with students from all, all the, the entire UC system, and the program I did was only for UC students. I didn't have um, enough language skills to do an immersion program, and it wasn't a, uh, the language culture program either. It was the UC center program. So I met uh, UC students from all over the UC system, um, and I did a homestay. And I decided to do a homestay because I didn't want to live with other UC students. I wanted to do a homestay. Like I said, I wanted to learn Italian. I wanted to challenge myself. And this homestay was a, she was about 60, 65 year old uh, widow and her, her daughter, her, her 40 year old daughter. And we were in a suburb and it was completely Italian and she didn't speak any English and I didn't speak any Italian. So imagine that I had to, at the end of the day, every day, I would have a headache because I was trying to form sentences. I would go to bed forming sentences, but what it did is it made me speak Italian. It forced me to speak Italian. And I'm proud to say that when I left, I just knew ciao, buongiorno, pizza, pasta, whatever. <laughs> I came back and um, I tested into Italian four. So it was after five months. So tested into Italian four and I could have, if I had had enough time, I came back my um, end of my junior year, I could have even minored in Italian if I would have really wanted to. Um, but that just goes to show um, what living in a homestay and forcing yourself to speak the language does. It, it, it allows for language dominance. Um, trips and excursions, we went to all over Italy. We went to all over Italy. And before I left, I was explained the stages of studying abroad. Well, you're going to be really excited, and then all of a sudden you're going to get homesick, and then, you know, then you're going to even out, and then you're not going to want to leave. You're going to miss it. I said, no, that's not going to happen to me. You know, it's not. It did. <laughs> it did. It really did because during the uh, okay after I got past the excitement in the middle of the program, all of a sudden I started missing barbecue. And I started missing uh, Mexican food because there was only one Mexican restaurant in the entire city of Rome. And I started missing front yards and backyards because it dawned on me that no one in Rome had a yard like we do in the United States. <laughs> like, these people live in boxes and all the negative stuff. And I hadn't, and by, by month four, I hadn't realized I hadn't sat in a car. I was riding the tram, I was riding the taxi, I was walking all over the place. Um, actually, not even taxi that much. I did never. I was never in a car while I was in Rome, a private car, in the in the five months. I know that sounds incredible, but I really wasn't. So I missed my car. Like I said, I had left my car here. I missed the space. I missed the beach, and the city just felt dirty. And I wanted to come home. But then, as I was telling our our, our director uh, Emily, when the time came to leave, I said, "I've learned a lot. I've learned so much." And I'm over it, like I don't want to leave. But it was summer, so I couldn't extend. I tried to extend, but I did not have the option of extending. Um, I, I could have hung out, I could have tried to find a job, right? But I didn't want to be, you know, begging in the streets. So, so I had to come back. I had to come back, but I could have extended it into what was then the Padova uh, program for the fall. 